Um, so you are something very unique. You are a uh, singer-songwriter who's working with AI to make music. That's right. Um, what does that mean exactly? Just sort of what does it mean to use AI to make music? There's no particularly easy definition for that um, because it gets into all sorts of questions about what I'm doing, what the AI is doing, and of course on every song or musical piece I'm working on that might be different. Um, but essentially I look at AI as another tool that I would as any other musician. Um, it is something I use for composition. It's something I also use for producing instrumentation depending on the platform to help with arrangement um, and just as a source of inspiration. So, that's a very big answer to yeah. a, a complicated question, but I use AI in a lot of different ways. Um, but essentially, this album that I'm working on right now, I Am AI, is completely composed in entirety using only artificial intelligence. Some of the songs have been produced only with AI as well, which means all the instrumentation has been done through the AI engine, um, not with uh, human producers. And then there are some other interesting ways that I'm integrating AI into the music and the visual components as well. What does it mean when you say songs produced with an AI engine? Um, what does that look like? Well, I, I guess it gets into definitions that you would know if, if you're working in music, um, there's usually the songwriter or songwriters and then song producers. Those are the people that actually take the composition and turn it into what we hear on the radio. Um, Sometimes there are music arrangers who are taking the musical stems and then arranging them into something that we find interesting. Uh, and so with some of these songs, I'm actually working with the AI platform as the, the musical instrumentation producer. So it's going to decide the instrumentation for me. I'm not making those selections, and it's up to me how I choose to arrange that instrumentation. So, And you'll hear that in the last song that, um, that I'll be performing for you today. It was uh, composed and produced with AI. Does it ever choose an instrument that surprises you? Yes, and sometimes you don't like the instrument. <laughs> um, I think that's one of the beautiful things about working on this project. One of many really beautiful things is that the, there's a constant surprise uh, around every single turn, which is that the artificial platform, artificial intelligence platform is essentially rendering something out. I might put in certain parameters like BPM, mood, or even inject it with data. Like for instance, take 1600s Baroque piano pieces, transpose them into MIDI's, feed them into the software, have them learn from that, spit something out, and then inject it into a 90s pop format. So you get some really interesting stuff. <laughs> some of it's really good, some of it's not so good, but I think, um, my role in a lot of this process is sort of functioning as an editor. Mm -hmm. I'm getting raw film footage from the AI and it's my job to turn that into a beautiful story. And if any of you out there, I know you've worked with video content, I mean, there, there are so many different ways you could take raw footage and create a story out of it. And, mm -hmm. and that's really my job. What inspired you to start doing this? I mean, that sounds a lot more complicated than, than sitting down and writing a song. Um, what, what got you started on this? What inspired you? It currently is more complicated um, than just sitting down and writing a song. But uh, what inspired me actually was a New York Times article that was released last January. Alex Marshall wrote a piece on AI music. And uh, it was a really great piece. I, I read it. I was fascinated and terrified at the same time as a musician. And I had been thinking for quite some time to work on an album project that explored the future of man and machine and the relationship between humans and technology. And I thought, I cannot make this album <laughs> without integrating AI in some meaningful way. And so I, um, from that article, I actually contacted the CEOs of several of the companies that were mentioned in that piece, said, I'd love to use your technology. How can I get access? And that was the beginning. That was a year ago. What did they make of it when you called them and said, I want to use your technology for songwriting? Well, half of them uh, did not build their AI platforms for songwriters, for original music creation. They were being built for, for various applications, but not that. And so some of them were like, I don't know if you're actually going to be able to do what you want to do with this. And I was like, let me just try. <laughs> so um, it became a really collaborative process with some of these companies um, and, uh, and a huge creative challenge for me and one that had a lot of unexpected results. One thing that's been sort of the subtext all day and, and yesterday as well is this idea that um, there's some sort of human genius, some sort of like human creativity or 
um, uh, emotion that can never be replaced by AI. And, and that even with all this job talk, we will always have that kernel. Mm -hmm. If you're using AI to make music, and maybe it's even choosing instruments in a better way than, than a human would, that threatens that idea. Yeah, it does. Um, it, it completely turns it on its head, which is also the point of the album and everything that I'm exploring in it. I think um, we are at a very interesting juncture in time. We already have AI artworks, visual paintings, poems that are not only passing tests, Turing tests, but uh, Turing that tests, humans, like that you can't tell that they're made by that you can't tell that they're made by AI. But but even the, even so far as to say that there are certain pieces of artwork that are being preferred by humans who don't realize they were made by AI when contrasted with other human works. So ultimately, art is in the eye of the beholder, and whatever emotional experience happens on the beholder, is that, are we one to say that that AI, just because it has no sentience, is not able to create something beautiful? I don't know. There's I'm not, I'm not here us. to be the... Um... There's nothing left. <laughs> I, I, so in terms of like what I'm working on with the music, there is so much synthesis happening. Um, it is a collaboration in much the same way collaborating with another human works. There's a back and forth, there's an iterative process, and I, I don't see AI on its own making beautiful music yet. Um, will that happen? Probably. That's, uh, my hope is that humans, as we always do, continue to evolve and create new things out of uh, what we've been handed, because that's what we're really good at, is synthesizing. Yeah. Um, and that's what AI is maybe not so great at. Um, but I think all of these questions will absolutely be more and more relevant as we move into the future. What is our place here? Are we really that special, Nelly? <laughs> I know, we're not. I know. <laughs> I'm starting to slowly realize that. Um, it's okay. I, I, I stand by my, I'm, I'm happy to be a, a house cat. I really am. <laughs> As um, long as it's with good humans. Yeah. As long that's as they true. treat you well, yeah. Um, interesting. We have, so we're, you're doing a performance. We're going to take questions in a minute. So people will queue up some questions and then we're actually going to get a musical performance. Um, the, what's something that surprised you? Or, and, and I know, um, actually, what I want to ask is about the anthems. Tell me about the process of making an anthem. Okay, yeah, so one of the, there are a number of different songs that I'm working on for the album and approaching them from different entry points and have created challenges within challenges um, because that's something that the AI actually allows me to do. So for instance, I'm working on a song right now that is um, the first song that will be released using Ethereum smart contracts. Of course, we don't want to like put as many buzzwords into the album as possible. <laughs> um, so I've got 350 collaborators in a Slack channel all writing this song with me, and we've decided to make an anthem. An anthem for the new you know, for the new blockchain community revolution, so to speak, right? And so I asked terrifying. all of the... <laughs> so I asked everyone who's collaborating on the song, give me a, a, a song in the past 300, 400 years that represents revolution to you. And I've been taking this music, transposing it into MIDI format so it can be injected into one of these platforms and analyzed and then, and then have the AI actually create some new iterative pieces based on what it learns from the anthemic structure of these songs. Um, so that's been one fun challenge. That does it sound like an anthem? Uh, there are what is it? chunks of it that definitely sound like an anthem, and then there are parts of it that don't. <laughs> um, a lot of these machines are just they're getting better and better, and they're learning, and that's part of my job is to take out the nuggets that are fantastic and hopefully put that into something, make that into something that is enjoyable. Um. Yeah. Um, do we have audience questions? Yeah, is that Goldberg? Yeah. <laughs> um, Ken Goldberg from Berkeley. Um, so do you have any thoughts on the regard? I'm curious how you think about your process in regard to something like John Cage using the I Ching and various random, randomization elements for making artwork. So do you see the AI, the, the system as essentially providing a, a random bunch of choices and then it's up to you to make the selections? Uh, that's a great question. It depends on the platform and, and what it's best at doing. I do think that the, 
that one of the greatest unexpected benefits of doing this is that a lot of times I will get something that is so completely random and off base that I wouldn't have ever thought about injecting into a piece of my own music that then serves as the best part of that song or as the starting place of that song. Um, some, of the other, some of the other platforms, that's less important um, or maybe that's just less of their uh, advantage that they, that they have to offer, but it really just depends. I don't know, whoever is behind Mr. Yeah, Goldberg there. Um, so what he said was, how often is it the case that I am on a platform and what I hear from the platform feels very derivative, um, or am I, am I saying that right? Familiar, like, wow, I've heard that. Or familiar, like, oh, I've heard that. And my response to that is, if you listen to Top 40 Radio right now, <laughs> I like to argue that Max Martin and a lot of the top pop producers, they're basically advanced AIs. <laughs> They have incredible pattern recognition. They know exactly what people like to hear, what sounds good to the ear. There's a fantastic video on YouTube um, that breaks down some of the most popular structures that are currently used in pop music today, like the whoa oh. You hear this in, I don't know, 80 songs in the last uh, decade, and it instantaneously makes you remember the song, maybe you want to listen to the song if you're into pop music. Um, but we already have these familiar tropes in music, so it's, it, it depends on what you're feeding the algorithm, what kind of data, but of course you are going to see certain patterns. Um, but I think for the most part, what I'm experiencing is something quite different. A lot of what I'm doing is taking disparate, um, disparate styles of music, so like 1600s Baroque piano, and then trying to make a pop song out of that, or uh, com combine reggae style with 1920s jazz. Like, what happens when you do that? And that's when you start getting really out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> um, Clinton Hardy. Um, I'll just go. Yeah, just go for it. Obviously, him. it's a really interesting thing to do, but do you see it as a permanent part of your artistic makeup, or do you think you'll walk away from it now? Do you I see you using AI from now on? I do. Um, maybe not in everything, but I, my background is as a YouTube content creator. So 2007, I started making videos, and at that point in time, you're pretty much scraping together every tool you can just to create. And to me, AI is the next in line as something that is incredibly easy access. It's free. You don't have to have a formal music education in order to use it. And I just can't imagine another tool that will be more widely and quickly adopted by kids than this to fulfill their creation desires. Uh, and, so, and so for me, same thing, yeah. So we have you're, a teaching, you're teaching the platform or inputting information into the platform. Are you finding that you're getting knowledge back, whether it's theory? So you're teaching the platform, but is it teaching you? That's an awesome question. She said, I'm teaching the platform, is it teaching me? Yes, I think about music differently than I did before. Um, I de I've deconstructed my own creative process um, in a way that I don't think I, I could have done prior to this, because I just see how, uh, I just see how music, I just see music creation differently. Um, so yes, the short answer is yes, I'm, I'm synthesizing a lot of, different styles that I wouldn't have otherwise, and learning more about chord structures and sounds and things that I don't have a traditional music background. So it's been incredibly helpful for me.